What's going on? What's going on? What's up, everybody? This is another episode of Sarcasm and Orgasm. I'm your host, Will. Thank you for listening and tuning in. And now, before we get to the sarcasm and before we get to the special guest that we got on today, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. That way you can get your daily dose of all things sarcastic. You know how we do it. Let's get sarcastic. All right, all right, welcome back. So I hope you're ready for this one, man. I got a banger for you, a banger, banger, banger. This dude, he brings you everything, and I mean everything. That's why his podcast is called The Gab. I would love to welcome, to welcome my good friend from the Bay Area, from the West Coast. You know how we do. We bring everybody. I would love to welcome my man, the Black Seinfeld, Mr. Kamal, a.k.a. Magic. Yo, what's good with y'all out there, man? Hell yeah, I appreciate you. Hey, this nigga name, his his nickname ain't Will the Fresh no more. It is Wild Will, because this nigga be saying some wild shit, and I fucking love it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, bro, hey, bro, they don't need to be knowing all that. They really all don't. Right, let me, let me, <laughs> all right, let me I plead the physics. <laughs> well, what's going on, bro? How you doing? How you doing? Man, I, all right. I'm good, but I'm a little irritated, man. These motherfuckers done got me hot out here, god damn it. God, god damn. damn. God damn. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, so tell me what, what they got you hot about. What's going on in the Black Sandfire? I mean, Seinfeld's world. Man, all right, man. So these little Reddit dweebs. I'm tired of these motherfuckers, bro. First of all, on the one end, because I post a lot of, like, you know, uh, important issues, important black issues that we dealing with. Mm-hmm. And the late, one of the latest things that I posted or one of my latest episodes on The Gap was racial profiling. And how it's actually getting fucking worse. And it's actually way worse in California where I reside. Like, mm-hmm. like you said, I'm from the Bay, but I live out in San Diego. All of California, racial profiling is now six times worse than all across the United States. All across the United States is two to three times worse. Damn. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it ain't getting better. It's getting fucking worse. But the thing that got me fucking hot today was essentially I get comments from... These motherfuckers, I call them in blackface because usually they be in the black groups, but they white people and they just be saying hateful shit. But what Reddit does, they erase the comments. So I'm only able to see it because I get the comments emailed to me. But on the platform Reddit, people can't see it. So they don't be understanding when I'm posting this content and stuff like that. Now I'm getting barraged with motherfucking honkies and these goddamn white cracker supremacists saying all types of shit. Talk about, they say a certain like, well, that's why I shouldn't do crime. All y'all criminals, go fuck yourself, you fucking liberal retard. And all, yeah, I'm getting all types of shit. This is just one video. I get it with multiple videos, but I was just at a point where I was like, I need to, I need the people in the group to see that. I'm producing this content for y'all while this shit is happening. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying like, oh, like, oh, you know, bit pity on me. Duh, duh. It's like, I'm not only getting it from the black people in the fucking group and no borderline fucking coons. I'm getting it from white people too. And they saying the most hateful shit. Mm-hmm. And so I posted today, I posted just one of the comments. I was like, yo, I'm producing this type of, First of all, okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my screen so okay. that everybody can see it um, instead of just, like, bring it up and all that. So that's what okay. I'm about to do so yeah, they yeah. can see what you're talking about. They can. Oh, you're about to show them? Yeah, I'm about to show them. Oh, shit. I'm about to show them. Oh, I'm about to show them. Okay. Hell okay. yeah. So here we go. Yeah. So as you can see, God damn, that shit pixelated. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Ah! <laughs> hey, boogie. Yeah, I put so uh scroll up to the first one because this is the second one I, I tweeted, and that was uh what you call it down? Is it down somewhere or up? 
I don't even know my own Twitter shit. I mean, this is because yeah. uh, you got your your intro here. Right here. WWE. Oh no, go 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 down, go down, go down, go down. Uh, some more. Yeah, cause down, down. I know where it's at. Down. Booyah! That's the first one, and that's what I said. This is what they think about us, y'all. Just be fucking aware. I know I don't say fucking, but I'm at a point right now that I'm amped. And you see what it says? It says, Black Skin, Black Heart replied, racial profiling at an all-time high. My show, The Gab. 81 episodes, motherfucker. Yeah, I do this shit. It says, with all the crimes you commit, you deserve to be in profile. You have earned your terrible reputation because you are criminals. Fuck you. This a motherfucking honky cracker that said this. And look at his name. It says black skin, black heart. So it's so confusing because you thinking it's a black person. They just in blackface. They in digital blackface. I am tired of it. So I posted that. And then some people, they were like, damn, bro, I didn't know that was going on. Or they were like, yo, let us know if people doing this will ban them. But then, you know, nah, bring it back up. Because this is the thing that ticked me off the fucking most. Bring bring back the screen share, and I'm going to show you the tweet that I just tweeted. And I was like, this motherfucker on this profile. So scroll up. So, yeah, scroll up, scroll up. Bam! This one right here, goddammit. And if you click on it so you can see the response of Medusa, Nagrafiti, whatever. Fuck her name. You know what? Fuck her at this point. You know, I'm tired of her shit. You know why I'm tired of her shit, Will? Because at first, she shits on everything I do, right? And I noticed a black one because I researched her shit and I found out, I'm like, yo, what? Like, I tried to support you at first. I'm like, because she was shit on shit and all I asked was like, where's your content? What do you do? What's your content? And she thought it was being sarcastic, but I'm like, nah, I want to see what you do if you want to shit on everything that I do. So then she was like, oh, yeah, uh, you know, I write a book and blah, blah, blah. But she's still being snarky and sarcastic and shit. And essentially, I was like, so I made a post and I was I was like, look, in this group, we supposed to be building. We supposed to be helping each other out. You know, I'm tired of us bickering and having little fucking arguments. So instead of that, I want to know what everybody does in this group so we can potentially try to help each other out. Like one example, this chick right here. Is like we we always bickering, but she has a book that she wrote, and clearly she got some shit to say. So it's like it'd be good to support her book. And like I messaged her, I DM her, and I was like, "Yo, what's the name of your book?" Da da. No response, nothing. You feel me? Then she go back on the motherfucking attack of my shit, and I'm just sitting there like I start ignoring the shit. But today I'm not ignoring that shit. I just showed you a motherfucking white person telling me fuck me because of racial profiling. And then you on here like being all sarcastic, like, oh, we had a Nick, oh, I mean a black president, and like, oh, you think, oh, you can marry a white person now, and this and that. Oh, such a surprise, you know. <laughs> it's over. I'm like, at this point, I'm like, bitch, shut up. And I don't like calling women bitches, but she is a bitch right now. Cause I even try to get some support and be like, let's support. I don't mind criticism but have some fucking balance and at this point i thought i'm like you ain't coon but you walk in that line yeah you but, walk in that line see here here's the thing bro and i've learned this myself because you know we we might be light-skinned but we still black at the end of the day so it it's always it's always going to be like that but you also got to learn is like no matter what where we're living at where we're living at, who it is, there is still going to be racism. Because <laughs> racism is just not, you can look at a person and say you're racist. Oh, racism mm-hmm. is taught. It is taught, especially when it's taught at a young age. So you got these cool motherfuckers out here that are being taught to hate everything but white. But what they don't seem to understand is they wasn't here to begin with. And nobody wants to claim ownership on that shit. So I understand your frustration, bro. I totally get it. I mean, I might not get it as hard as you because like you said, you getting it six times worse than me. 
But no matter where we're at, we always going to be hated. Hell, even Africans don't like us Blacks because they're yeah. not considered Black. They are considered Africans. Yeah. <laughs> don't call them Black. They're Africans. Or they're wherever right. the fuck they come from. They're like, I'm Nigerian. Yeah, huh? <laughs> don't call me that. I No, no. Don't call me that. <laughs> you want to know what? Shout out to one of my best friends, Chuck. That motherfucker Nigerian, you feel me? But he understand. He get he get what's going on and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's just my gripe though. My gripe is there's no fucking balance when it comes to this shit. No, right? Like, there would never be there would never be a balance when it comes to racism. Like if, if you ain't white, then it ain't right. We all know that. Especially as we black folks, like we niggas, we know that for sure. Like if we can't get along in the country club, we ain't never gonna go along because we ain't gonna be seen as it. Like you can cut your hair, you can cut everything, you can look prim, proper, all the way to the T to look Caucasian. But yep. the minute you open up your mouth, it's over. Like yes. it's fucking over. Man, so, you see that fucking nose? Uh huh. God damn it. Yeah. They look at the nose and be like, nah, you you ain't white at all, god damn it. I can shave all this shit off. Yes. Clean cut. They like, God damn, that's a big ass nose. Mm-hmm. Hell no. You can have the whitest name possible. Like my name is so white. And even when I open up my mouth, it's like, oh no, Mm-mm. we don't want no parts of you because you're a darkie. I might not be dark, but I'm still a darkie. I will always be a fucking darkie. And I'm not, and I'm not. I'm not putting, you know, hate out there like that, but it's just, that's the world we live in. I mean, things have got progressively worse, progressively worse when Trump came in off because then all the fucking wood workers came out like it was a fucking party. Like it was a fucking party. And now we know, like, and I heard this joke the other day, but now it's so true. We got our Juneteenth, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, now white people have their own Juneteenth. Mm-hmm. January, what was like January 6th or 26th or whatever, that's when white people came out and lost their damn minds. <laughs> Ever since then, it that would now be the white person's Juneteenth when they storm the Capitol. Storm the fucking <laughs> Capitol. And now look where we're at. There is not there was some type of racial divide, but now the racial divide is much more deeper. It's much more bigger because now it's like you don't have <laughs> white right fingers. You got Racist and non-racist. There are no more balance of powers. There's no more donkeys. There are no more elephants. It's either you are racist or you're not. And if you're not racist, then you're going to be with the people who are still trying to fight the good fight. But if you are racist, you're going to be over there on the other side where people don't want you of the, of the I guess, of the white supremacy, mm-hmm. of the white racist. Like, if you're not racist, hell, I can be racist towards you, but I'll still get thrown over into the other side because I'm still black. Exactly. I, can be a, I can be a black Republican, but I'll still get thrown over with the other people because I'm not of the white Aryan tradition. Mm-hmm. So, and, and that's the thing, bro. That's what pisses me off the most of this incident. Because one, it's a black woman. And you know the whole stigma of black men don't support black women and vice versa. And I'm trying to do it and I'm getting shitted on. Two, she should fucking know better. She yeah. should fucking know better. I don't care about the fucking white cracker honky that's being a fucking racist. That's fucking, that's expected. I don't give a damn about them. I care about your ass and how you fucking responded and how you are you you actually in my eyes is worse than this than motherfuckers. Yeah. You should fucking know better. You, you should know really better. Should. She really should because she is almost like of the struggle. And we always preach it about we're in the struggle, but you don't understand the struggle if you never went through it. You don't know what it's like to have to open up your own fucking oven to heat the whole goddamn house. Yeah. You don't know. But if you know, then why are you trying to be on the other side? Because they ain't never going to accept your, your, oh, I got to get my nails done. Oh, I got to get my hair did every two and three weeks just to keep up with a facade that don't fucking care about you. That's yeah. what I don't understand about these so-called coonish niggas that are doing this coon shit. Like, why are you doing it? Because you're not going to be accepted. I don't give a fuck what you say. I don't give a fuck how you act. The white man or the white woman is not going to accept it because they don't want, like Clayton Biggs, he said, no big eye, big nose, big lip, bugger eyed nigga trying yeah. to act like they white when they really ain't. And it's not going to happen. No, and they ain't going to fucking respect you. They're going to just dispose of you. Yeah. They do that to all they coons. 
they look at you laughing like, ha, huh? all right, once once we done with you, we're going to throw you away. And it happens every fucking time. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, I, I just usually, I ignore it. You know what I mean? I'm just like, I'll be like, okay, whatever. Or I don't really get into it. But today, today was, I was just like, bruh. And I'm noticing, I'm like, it's, it's like, it's a couple people. And she's one of them. And I'm like, I'm like, I dare you. When I post this about this shit, clearly this motherfucker is hating black people. And you still want to come out here and still try to shit on my post and be sarcastic. And at the same time, I tried to support you. I know how hard it is to fucking try to support each other and shit. And yep. you this fucking coon shit. Mm -hmm. Get the fuck out of here. And that's God the, deal. You know, it's like that's the problem with these niggas out here. They always talking about, oh, I'm trying to get this and I'm trying to get that. Like I just spoke to a man about financial literacy. He was like, we as black people. Yep. Uh, Tremaine, Tremaine, uh, what's his last Tremaine. name? Tremaine Willis. Shout out, yeah, to shout out to him. I just listened to that shit. That brother was spitting. Yes, he was. And you and I was just sitting there listening because he was dropping so many things that I can I almost like utilize myself, but didn't think of it as to put more effort into it. And he's saying, like, we can have any and everything we want if we just put our minds to it. If we stop having a can't attitude and start having a can attitude. And that's when it comes to these cool niggas. They thinking that we can't do nothing when we could do anything we want. We all know. All of us know we as black people we get stole on. Everything gets still stole from us, mm -hmm. and then it gets rebranded and remarketed. The hip hop culture is the number one money maker in the world. It is yep. not a billion dollar industry. It is a trillion dollar industry. We're trillion. talking from yeah, we're talking from music to everything else in between. You can go to the hood, take a dance. <laughs> on TikTok, watch them fucking white people redo it again, and it blows up, like you said, like motherfucking wildfire. Yep. Why? Because these white people take everything, but the one thing they will not take, they won't take us. Mm -hmm. They will never take us. Never. And we gotta get that in our head, and it's like, look, man, I I, I get it, man. It's not all white people ain't, ain't crazy like that. I say the five percenters, bro, because it's five it's, to me, all the white people I done met, out here in San Diego, 5% of them's cool. The rest of these motherfuckers, either they blatantly fucking racist or they in closet racist. And most of them in closet racist because I'm in California. You know how that shit goes. So I'm just like, you know, I get that. You feel me? But at the same time, as black people, you always got to be fucking aware of like this motherfucker might not be for my best interest. And at the same time, they might just be in it for the goddamn money and steal some of my, my shit. And then once they done with me, they might dispose of me. And I'm tired, I'm tired of seeing these coon ass motherfuckers doing their dirty work. God damn. I'm tired of that shit. Why would you do their dirty work? Yeah, I know. It's that don't make no sense. It, it yeah, it don't make no sense. It's truly fucked up. And even with the clauses of races, they came out when Trump got inaugurated. They tried their best. Like you had these people outside of the office just saying, Oh, please, let's change the votes. God ain't gonna change those fucking votes because he already saw what y'all was doing four years into it. Ain't no fucking way he was gonna give us another four. No. Hell no. I mean, I'm not saying that Biden has done the greatest job because Oh, he done a shitty job too. Fuck yeah. that. So, it's almost like the next person that runs, I'll vote, but I just hope it, it's someone we ain't never heard of. He can't fuck it up worse. Not that I'm trying to talk about politics, but when it comes down to it is this world was fucked up with racism going almost back 400 years. It's going to be fucked up another 400 years from whenever now. So it ain't never going to stop. Never. But what needs to stop is these niggas acting like they going to be accepted by the whites and they shitting on people like you and I, especially you, when all you're trying to do is bring some lights to things that are not talked about as you like to present it. Like your win video that you had, I posted that and I put it on my story. It's like shit like this needs to be talked about. Yeah. Like you said, it's not talked about in the white media or even the black media. If mm -hmm. black Twitter don't pick it up, then you know no one gives a fuck about it. Hell no. And that's the thing. I'm trying to bring fucking balance. Look it. I ain't trying to be all just all just serious and shit all the time. I try to bring stories that like I know that you know 
us black people like to hear the, the ratchetness, mm-hmm. the debauchery. I'll mm-hmm. bring some of that shit, but God damn it, we great ass people too, and we do great things, and that shit don't get mentioned enough. And then also vice versa when it comes to the white folks. Sometimes they doing some cool shit, but a lot of times they do debauchery shit, and that shit don't be motherfucking uh, announced. Nobody talk about it. They try to sweep it under the damn dirty ass white rug. And mm-hmm. I'm tired of that shit. And when you try to expose it, then you have these black ass coons. You feel me? Or these motherfuckers be out here and like, oh man, 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 you know what I mean? I'm like, why are you crying about it? Nah, 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 nah. And then when you like, oh, nigga, I ain't gonna cry about it. Let's build some shit. Then they like, they either ghost or they say shit. Or they gonna be like, oh, nigga, you just trying to get paid, nigga. You just trying to. I'm like, oh, shut the fuck up. You're so lame ass. God damn, you niggas is lame. Yeah, they're, they're, it's, it's like there's no in between. They even for or against it. You can't have someone that's almost teetering between the middle trying to be neutral. Like niggas don't know how to be neutral out here. They really don't. They don't. So a critical thinking. I think of it that that it's not even it, you right. It's neutral, but at some point, you motherfuckers got a critical think. Just think critically. How is? But see, you also have to think about like critical thinking is not taught. Everybody's just being pushed to the next level, to the next grade, to the next wherever the fuck it is. Like, <laughs> we don't have enough people nowadays to really think for themselves, to really take a thought and try to figure out what the cause and effect is going to be when you say some shit or do some shit. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's hard. It's hard to teach, you know, think for yourself, be an individual when we got everybody following everybody doing the same thing. So yeah. critical thinking of its own, that's almost like a lost art, like cursive. It is like cursive. Who the fuck made cursive? Fuck that <laughs> motherfucker. You made a goddamn fucking obsolete and fucking fixed you fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I had to learn that shit in school. We was like, you gotta write curse from C's and H's and all that shit. And now I can't even use it. Fuck you, man. I mean, I use it here and there. Only time I really use it is when I'm signing my name. But yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's about it. Like, I know my, when um, I used to go to the store with my grandmother, she would give me her list and she would write curses. I'd be like, you know I don't like curses. Why are you doing this? <laughs> You'd be like, is that an A or a C? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> like I can't tell if that's an S or an R or a Q. So yeah. but I feel you, bro. I, I really do. It's just it's it's like some really dumb fuck shit that I see what you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. And it's positivity. It's positivity, but it's also like you said, it's critical thinking. But nobody wants to see it that way. They just want to take it as you being reverse racist or whatever shit that's called. And it's fucked up. It's real fucked up. Yeah, reverse racism or some old bullshit, or it it get looked at, and I do blame a lot of black men for this shit. Where they use they or even even black women, just black people, they use their fucking activism to pay the rent. Ooh, that, you know what I mean? That, that's that's a real good one. That's yeah. a real good one. That that kind of that kind of will hit some. Hit some hey. souls right there. <laughs> hey, shout out to Billy Woods, man. Billy Woods is an artist. He once said the shit and that resonated with me. And I get, I could get why black people be guarded when it's like something like me or what you doing. And, you know, they could be kind of guarding like, what this nigga doing? I don't know if he really forward or he just trying to pay his rent. It's like, motherfucker, we could do both. We could be forward and pay ourselves. Motherfucking white people do that shit. You know what they call that shit? Philanthropy. <laughs> for real yep. yep I'm doing a great deed but I'm getting rich off of it mm-hmm. but and like, you don't know when they're doing it if it's for the good of the people or the good of their pocket exactly you have no idea no you don't just like I can never understand why <laughs> do people want to go over to Africa and build churches why tax write off yeah write the fuck out that church mm-hmm Damn, I didn't know God was writing on taxes. God damn. Shit. <laughs> they better be careful, though. They robbing priests out here and shit. 
Yeah, I seen that. Oh, I seen that. But you know what? That's what that nigga get because you can't be out here wearing all that shit and thinking it ain't gonna happen. Now yeah. it's one thing if you got these stupid ass niggas on IG, but it's another thing if you're a man of God and you think you ain't gonna get touched, nigga. Mm-hmm. You got another thing coming. Another yeah. thing. Hey, the thing about it, it, it was a couple things that I, I took from this shit. One, first of all, you got 400k in a goddamn church. What the fuck y'all doing? I'm sorry. What the hell? Y'all moving like drug dealers, you better move like them, goddamn. Put that yeah. shit in the safe, you feel me? I mean, you better bring a little toot toot in the goddamn church or something. Tudo, is people starving out here. Is people really struggling out here. And you flashing and all that shit, and you not helping out the community. I know you're not helping out the community, because if you a person help out, helping out the community, you ain't about to get robbed. I'm sorry. They are not about to rob your ass. Because you bring too much value into the community itself. But another thing... And let me, before you go to another thing, and remember the scene from American Gangster. He told yeah. his brother, look at you. He was like, what? He was like, yeah, look at you. What do you look like? He was like, I look good. He was like, no, you look like a clown. You look like a big sign that says, hey, come and arrest me. Come and attack me. And that's what you're doing. You're putting it, you're stunting, acting like you're doing something. Then when you get touched up, look what happened. Look what the fuck happened. Man, could have got your fucking wife killed. Could have got your eight-month-old baby killed. Because they put the gun to the motherfucking eight-month-old baby. And they had a hundred motherfuckers in that congregation, mostly women and children. You putting their ass in danger too. So that that's another thing like, the, the people that robbed them, though, I I don't got... I, fuck them motherfuckers, too, bro. Because you put a lot... Like, putting kids and women in danger? Come on, bro. Yeah. That shit whack, too. Yeah. But the priest is whack as fuck, too, bro. Like, nigga, you, you know what you was doing. You yeah. Know? I, I seen that this morning when I was just, like, scrolling and it said trending topics. I'm like, okay. And I look more into it. And I'm like, see? There you go. Out here, once again, thinking you doing something, man, you going to get touched up for real, for real. You better be lucky that they didn't shoot you. You yeah. better be lucky because you really playing with people's lives, like you said, because people out here, they're not they're not rolling like that. Uh-huh. Hey, hey, we, we are, you and I, and I guess I can say this, like you and I, we broke black folks trying to make it, you know, trying to rub two nickels together just to get a dime. Yeah. Yeah, it's messed up. It's messed up. That's almost why I don't believe in preachers and priests and all this, because you say you're doing it for God. Really, you just doing it for yourselves and the own lining of your pockets. So don't tell me that you're trying to give me a word, inspire me and make me think and believe in the pulpit. But when the pulpit is not really what it's supposed to be, you're just hiring for better riches. And then you're going to just keep sucking the community dry. So that's why I really don't do churches like that because I never know whether it's good or bad. Like I believe in the church, in the sanctuary, but I don't believe the man that's in the church in the sanctuary. Yeah, man. It, man, it, it's both black, white, Hispanic, Asian, all them motherfucking priests and shit like that. All them got them mega churches. They got fucking plans. They like, God wanted me to have this. So give me your money now. What they call that shit? Tax collection? Yeah. Is that what they call it in church? Yeah. Tithes. It's called tithes, right? Uh, yeah, tithing. Yeah. Tithing. You motherfuckers talking about <laughs> if if God didn't want me to have this hundred thousand dollars worth of jewelry and fucking planes and shit, he wouldn't gave it to me. It's like nigga, what the fuck you talking about? This motherfucker that you preaching to got got can't even pay their rent. Bro, give me you fucking tithes and shit. Preachers are the biggest pimps ever. Most of them be ex-pimps. Yep, ex-pimps. They went to jail. They did <laughs> some type of just felonious bullshit. And now they just automatically found God. No, you ain't found God. You just found a way to not really have a job. That's what you find. So. Yeah. But it made me think. <laughs> Maybe I should find God. <laughs> <laughs> I found him, y'all. He was hiding <laughs> from me. God damn, he was playing hide and seek. <laughs> you know what, God? No, don't strike me down. I'll <laughs> believe. 
believes. I still believe. Okay, I don't know what he talking about. Don't strike now, Will. <laughs> I don't feel like you know. either, but you know what? You are uh, you a uh, little touchy there, little. I'm not sure. I'm sorry, God. <laughs> <It's> my bad. <laughs> <laughs> But but oh, no, it just is just it's one of those things when it comes down to is like you just don't know what's real and what's not, especially like these two topics. Like you got these coon people out here, then you got these other people that are thinking they're higher than now, and mm-hmm. both of them they can really get it. They can get these hands if you know they always want to keep talking. They really yeah, can't. For real. And at the same time, y'all y'all fucking up what we trying to do, Will. We out here trying to build. Mm-hmm. Yep. We out here trying to make shit better for black people. Now, you know, some people, they can they could come on, you feel me, and shit like that. But this for us, my nigga. And they fucking it up for us. And I don't like that shit. And it's almost like, that's why I'm kind of leery on, like, getting on Reddit to, like, really do more promotion that I'm already doing. Because if someone like that comes at me, I'd be the type of person to go find them. Like, do research, research, and find them bitches and be like, okay, what's up? Because there ain't no way you're going to come at me trying to tell me some bullshit thinking that I'm, I'm... I'm being racist or I'm not for the culture or I don't see things one way when it ain't even like that. Like you said, I'm just trying to promote positivity. I'm just trying to promote awareness and critical thinking. There ain't nothing wrong with none of those. Not nothing. Yeah, yeah. but I do say this, Will. Get on Reddit, bro. It's a great way to market. And it's, it come with the territory. Like you know, I've been doing this for a cool minute. I get it. It come with the territory. But at the same time, we humans, some things is going to tick you off, bro, and you're going to start being... Typing away, writing that novel to them motherfuckers, you feel me? But it's great marketing, bro, because even though you have fucking dickheads like that, you actually do find people that really fuck with your shit and it'd be good dialogue and stuff like that from time to time. So it's it's not all bad with Reddit, but a lot of Reddit, it do be a lot of bullshit, but it's a great marketing tool, bro. Will, Will you need to most definitely do that shit, bro. Trust me. Definitely. Well, trust me. you, I definitely would get on it and, you know, try to market myself as best as possible because it's like between my Facebook, my Instagram, a little bit of my Twitter, even my Snap. I mean, my stuff is risen, but it's just like, I feel like I'm not hitting all avenues. I really yeah. feel like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, man, get on, get on, get on Reddit, bro. I'm telling you, bro, it's a, it's a, it's a great thing. It open your eyes up too. Like it opened my eyes up to, to a lot of shit, bro. Like the shit I'm just even t- telling you about. But it also is like it weirdly gave me even more confidence because it was like, oh, you motherfuckers hate this shit. Some of y'all love it, but you motherfuckers hate this shit. That mean I'm doing something right. Mm-hmm. And then I don't have people say, I found your shit on Reddit, bro. Like, I fuck with your shit, da da da. You feel me? So, hey, man, it's, it's a great tool, bro. You know what I mean? Okay. All right. Well, I'll definitely get into it, start checking it out, you know, making it a daily routine, you know, to all my social platforms that I got going on. I really do. Yeah, um, man. But I thank you, man. It's always good to talk to you because you always talk yeah. some crazy, influential shit. I want to put that in there because. Yes, you are out there, but you are out there in a way to where it's almost like you're keeping your ear to the ground. And you got a lot of podcasters out here they ain't doing shit like that. Like mm-hmm. we said before, when we had talked, the three of us, when Frank was on, shout out to yeah. Frank. Shout out to Frank. Yep, yeah. shout out to Frank. Uh, it was like redundancy. That's was the main thing in podcasts where it's like people just want to be redundant and talking the same shit over and over. But you and Frank... Man, I've listened to some of y'all episodes. I even tuned in some of the lives y'all did. And it's just like, y'all different. Y'all very different. And I like that. Different is good because when different is good, it teaches you and shows you something that you just never would expect it. And to you guys, um, almost me being affiliated with you and Frank, I appreciate it. I truly do. Man, we appreciate you, bro. And look, man, you working. You doing your shit, bro. And your shit different, too. And the thing about it, and even the people out there that's listening, when you're doing something different, it's going to take a long time to blow up. You're going to get a lot of flack. No, for real. Because motherfuckers don't like different. I'll tell you that much. Mm -hmm. I don't like, you a black man? Why you ain't talking about relationships and how black women ain't shit? Why you ain't doing that? Oh, what? What? 
You want to talk about, about racism, but you want to be funny about it? You ain't all angry? What the fuck? This don't make no damn sense. You, I'm telling you, bro. It, the different shit, bro, the, the, it, it takes a while for people to, to, to get it. But, yeah, yeah I'm telling you, bro, they going to get it, bro. They going to get it. And we too light-skinned, you know what I mean, good-looking motherfucker. He's going to hate us. <laughs> and i say this one thing before I get you out of here, like, um, I remember when well, last year I had always tuned into Kevin Samuels, always listened to it because I thought it was funny. It was especially, funny. Yeah, especially when he used to hold the women. But <laughs> he was like, <coughs> blow up overnight, go back to my earlier shit, and you see that it was a work in progress. It really was. And it was. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, he didn't have the setup that he did, you know, when he was doing it, when he got big. But you go back to his early videos. Everything, it's all progression. Yeah. So it's like, I hear what you're saying, and I've been trying to utilize everything that I've learned so far, and even some of the things you told me off camera. But still, it's like, yeah, different is good, but different takes a while to catch on. It does. Takes a fucking long time. That's why a lot of people don't do it. They mm -hmm. see other people's blueprint, they be like, damn, that's how it works. Da -da. And it's like, motherfucker, that shit don't, ain't going to work for you. And they ain't gonna be like, are oh, you doing the same thing as this nigga? So work. <laughs> it ain't gonna work. It never does. Like, yeah. you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, and also it, think about it like this. I, I know this is not it, basically this is a job, right? Remember I talked about them a lot last pod, treat this shit like a job. Yeah. You think motherfuckers coming into the first year? getting paid buku bucks getting all the attention in their first year on any type of job that only happens in fucking sports yep. mm -hmm. sports that don't even happen in any other type of entertainment from acting to this podcast shit to fucking rapping artists all that shit no you gotta go through the ringer and you gotta be different and when you different you automatically go through the ringer and most people just look at it and see like this nigga blown up all year and it's like this motherfucker been actually working for five plus years on some shit been around and i remember i had it i had a meeting with this one dude who i cannot say his name because i signed the nda he was like well you got oh, something. okay yeah <laughs> He was like, well, you got something. You you just got to keep working, putting the work in. And it felt good because it came from somebody I didn't even know. Didn't know, never knew about. He seen my shit through word of mouth through an interview I did. And he looked me up and he was like, you really got something here. And if you stick with the format that you got, especially on your YouTube, you will blow up. You will yep. make money out here. And I'm like, oh, my God. And then he even gave me, he gave me his word and also a contract that we did. Like, you hit that, you hit that, what you gonna call it? I'm I'm there to help you make money. So I'm almost trying to get to the level to where this is going to work out. Like, I don't have to go to work eight hours a day. I can sit here and do three hours of work, maybe four, and I'm done for like the day or even the week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to get at. That's what I'm working for. So when you say being different, it is good to be different. Mm -hmm. But we are taught not to be different. We are taught to be the same. We teach our children, yes, go play ball, go play football, go play basketball because you can make it. But the moment they don't make it, they get crocodile tears. They're trying to figure out what the fuck they're going to do next. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem with society that we live in as black people. And these cool niggas out here thinking you can get anything if you just go be a ball player. You yeah. get you can get any bad bitch you want as long as you got that bag and got that millions. But last time I checked, that same bad bitch, she was being told the same thing when she was growing up. Oh, all you have to do is get somebody with some money, you'd be good. No. no. <laughs> don't work like that. You really don't. You really don't. Oh, how, how do you think the fuck you got here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I hear what you say and just like cross over from different things, but I come back to it by saying it's like, yeah, I love being different. I love saying the shit that I do, the shit that I come up with. But then also, I love the relationship that I have made. Mm -hmm. The friends, the acquaintances that I made, like you and Magic. Like, I never would have met y'all if I never would have got on what you would call it and we would have chopped it up. And then exactly. it just dragged on from there. Yep. So it's almost like you got to try in this business. and Because this is what this is. It's a business. Yeah. Treat it like a business, not a fucking hobby. No. 
You got to put in the work every day. Do your edits. Do your research. Mm -hmm. You know, sit here. Find out what works, what doesn't work. And then you keep going because it's all a formula. Once you get that formula down, it's great. Yeah. I love podcasts like... Um, like a math equation, it's trial and error. You gotta figure out what works and what don't. And once you get that right formula, no one can ever take it away from you, ever. Because you did it, you figured it out. Mm -hmm. Exactly, bro, trial and error, you feel me? And the thing the, the thing about it also, Will, is like you're, you're doing something and I feel like I'm doing it also, that we're showing these motherfuckers that black men can come together and build some shit. Yes. And do it. And it don't have to be about sports or mm -hmm. fucking, uh, music and shit like that. You know, we, look, I love sports and music and stuff like that. But we not all fucking monolithic. If you don't know what the fuck that means, mm -hmm. ask my brother Google. You feel me? We are and not monolithic. We, we doing it in an articulate, smart way, too. We not two niggas just sitting around saying, oh, yeah, I ain't about that bullshit. No, no. No, we actually saying some shit that matters. We yeah. smart, too. We got brains. We yeah. know how to use them. Yeah. And we saying it in a funny way, you feel me? That's why your nickname Wild Will at this point, bro. You be saying some wild shit. I'll be like, <laughs> okay, okay, I got to cut this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, hey, but real talk though, bro. I really do appreciate you. You you really is giving me like a, a platform and shit. You feel me to, to come on? You one of the few. I, I've been I've been noticing that like a lot of people either I I don't know if they're afraid for me to come on their platforms or if I don't have the the numbers yet. I have no idea, but I've been getting a lot of rejections, and I appreciate you, my bro. And you about to be on our platform. You're gonna be one of our next guests. On the motherfucking Magic Think Tank podcast, you feel me? And, and yeah, I just wanted to tell you that, bro. Oh well, much love, bro. I appreciate that. I really do. Thank you. And I'm just out here trying, just like you, because we all know it's a struggle. It's a grind to sit here after you get done, and then you go back to do edits, and you gotta do the playback, and you think it's an hour. Well, it's really two hours because you sitting here chopping and screwing. So, mm -hmm. love, brother. Much love. So, yeah. Fuck all that mushy shit. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you! You know what we need from you, bro. We gotta get you some damn sound effects, bro. I, well, I mean, I'm saving up for a roadcaster. Don't get me wrong; that's my next big investment—a roadcaster with a nice mic. Okay, so that's like six, seven hundred bones, and I'm almost there. Not yet, but don't worry. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll be on. I'm on your heels. So I, okay, I can't. I don't hear that. Da, 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 da. No, yeah. Yeah. Fire sound yeah. Effects, yeah i'm on now that's that's my next big investment for this so okay. i got okay. you hell yeah so the listeners out there and who watching they want to listen to you they want to tune in drop the likes tell them where they can go hey man for for my tubers out there bro look at man youtube been around since 05 i don't really need to tell y'all what to really do well, I'm going to tell you just like the rest of the tubers out there. And, well, you a tuber now, too. So you got to tell them like this, too, bro. The way you can find me, bro, is either type in the Gab or the Magic Think Tank or Kamal Johnson ENT. Bam, and I pop right the hell up. And also on, uh, on podcast form, too, you feel me, on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts, and on SoundCloud. I'm only on those platforms because I try to consolidate and keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Either type in, like I said, the Gab, Kamal Johnson ENT, or the Magic Think Tank. Bam, and I pop right up, man. Hey, I appreciate all y'all out there, man. It's a, a lot, a lot of people out there. I appreciate, man, from you, you ugly bastards to you, you beautiful snobs to you in between motherfuckers. And Lord, and Lord, there's a lot of in between people out there. Will I'm telling you, mm -hmm. oh God. <laughs> yes, there is, my brother. Yes, there is. Well, definitely, man. It's it's always a pleasure to come and chop it up with you, because I remember. And before we got out, I say this: I remember when we did the three of us, and you told me about the elephant. Like I ain't know shit about that. I went and looked that up, and I was fucking surprised. Like my mind was blown, bro. Blown. Always telling me something that is going on that I just I don't know about. Maybe it's because I'm over here on the east and you over here on the west, but it's like, damn. It's almost like you a fucking news channel. You really is. Exactly. I 
I'm so glad you said that. I didn't even need to say it out there, people. I'll be saying I'm a black news channel on a black media, and you fucking said it, Will. Will said it, y'all. I didn't say it, but that's what I am. That's why you need to support, because I'm one of the only black news channels mm. that ain't tuning like Candace Owen or Herschel Walker. God damn. <laughs> I'll throw y'all away in a minute. I'm telling you. I'm well, y'all heard it here, folks. Y'all heard it. You can find my man, The Gap, everywhere. On the on the tube and, you know, on the, the pod, podcast platform. Make sure you go check him out. Also, make sure you go check out the Magic Thing Tank with him and Frank. Shout out to Frank. Hell yeah. Um, Magic man, this has been so good having you on. It really is. You welcome to come back anytime. You know, bro, just hit me up and let's make it happen. Yeah, we're gonna do this again, bro. And then we go, we gonna have to welcome you to our world. Yeah, you know, you're right. gonna come on the Magic Think Tank podcast. You feel me? It's about yeah. to go down. You feel it me? definitely is. It definitely is. Well, Magic, one time for one time. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you for stopping through and sharing your, you know, cooning stories with me. <laughs> 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 yeah, man, we gotta expose these motherfucking <laughs> coons and people that's tithering the line of coonism. God damn, man, it's we need y'all to shut the fuck up. Yes. Them white folks is watching is like, well, they saying it, man. I ain't gotta say nothing. Look, your own people saying it. Shut up. You want to ring them up? Shut your motherfucking ass up. You know, remember you, you little and you do something bad mm-hmm. and. A, a positive male role model is like, no, shut up. Nigga, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, man. Well, thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. So when you want to come back, hit me up. You're more than welcome, bro. Anytime. Anytime, man. All right, man. I appreciate it, bro, bro. All right, man. I'll talk to you soon. You take care. All right. You too, bro. All right. Yes, folks. Yes, folks. I was joined by my good man, Mr. Magic. You know, from the Magic Think Tank plot. Man, he is he's crazy, but he is also enlightening. We need to stop doing this cooning shit out here because we as black folks should be for all of us. We should be for the people, for the culture. You can't keep saying you for a culture if you always are on the other side. You can't keep saying for the culture if you always supporting someone else and not your own people. We need to start taking light and taking a heed to that. Remember, you can always change the outcome. But it's always about you and how you're going to do it. All right. So I would love to give another another shout out to my man, Mr. Magic from the Magic Think Think Tank. Make sure you go check him out. Kamal Johnson, ENT, everywhere. And it doesn't matter everywhere. Like he said, YouTube's been around since 05. So you put his name in, boom, he'll pop right up. So this has been another episode of Sarcasm and Orgasm. I'm your host, Will. I would love to thank my guest, Mr. Magic Kamal, for joining me. Thank y'all so much. I'll talk to y'all soon. Peace.